Hey guys, what is up? Today we are going to be doing something a little different than normal. We are going to be 3D printing our own Nerf crossbow. This is a vintage 1995 blaster that has recently been modeled by Captain Slug. There are three versions here. The original, which is basically a mimic of the original uh, with all of the shell pieces and clamshell design. There is a homemade version, which takes a K26 spring as well as some other uh, homemade components and it's just designed to basically fit those right out of the print and then the one that I'm going to be doing is the full length K26 version which has a modified nose cone which is a new addition with the normal crossbow it would stop right about there whereas this one has that extra nose piece and the stock is extended slightly to accommodate for that longer spring load. Uh, I'm going to be going with this one just because it's A gives you the most power and B I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to be going with this. I just downloaded the file. Now I'm going to go through the process of converting all the various pieces into STL format and then getting ready to 3D print it. Okay, so now that we have our STL files, we're going to take each of them and put it into a 3D printing slicing software, which basically converts a 3D model into something that your printer understands uh, by making it into a bunch of little layers. And then from here, you can adjust your different settings for different materials, as well as add supports and things like that. So it's kind of crazy to think that the hobby has come from using marker barrels into blasters to now 3D printing vintage blasters with homemade internals. So it's kind of just crazy to see that progression, but without further ado, let's get printing. Okay, so now the first piece is done. We have the extension for the full length K26 version of this crossbow. and. From here, we can see that this is printed in a translucent filament. Now, it's kind of hard to see on camera. i got to angle it a certain way. But you can sort of see the uh, cross-hatching pattern from the infill just in here. The infill is the percentage of plastic film the inside. 0% uh, would be basically like a shell with air in the inside. And then 100% would be solid plastic. So usually in 3D printing, to conserve plastic and make things lighter, uh, while still maintaining durability, you can... Uh, determine how much infill percentage you want in here. Here's a good shot real quick. But I was going to print the whole crossbow in this translucent filament, but A, it's kind of hard to print in because it's an ABS over a PLA, and normally it's not an issue because I have some upgrades on my printer and it has an enclosure, so I can print some of the harder to print plastics like ABS and even harder to print plastics. However, you can see every little imperfection in here, like you can see some very minor cracking, uh, mostly like here if you shine in the light the wrong way. Uh, from head on it looks pretty fine, but you can tell upon further inspection there are some issues, so I decided to not print the whole crossbow in this. So I was ready to go with this piece until I looked further and realized that there was a slight layer shift, uh, which is essentially where uh, there's an error where your uh, momentary switch on one of your axes uh, gets triggered accidentally and it resets the position essentially. So it continues printing, it doesn't stop printing. So as you can see, it basically, you know, did the first uh, inch and a half or so, it had that layer shift and then it continued printing the rest of the thing flawlessly, which is why I think layer shifts are one of the coolest, uh, you know, sort of misprints you can get because it just looks like it shifted. However, in a 19 hour print, it's not exactly as cool and uh, this piece is totally unusable, but it's a cool looking. Uh, faulty print. Speaking of layer shifts, uh, well, revision 2 did not go so well either. Uh, you can actually see the infill. I stopped this one because I started it overnight and then I stopped it in the morning when I saw that it was completely useless. So this is a more extreme example of a layer shift where it totally shifted over like a good two inches and it tried to print over air essentially which is what all this spaghetti looking stuff is but then once it uh, built up a platform it started printing normally again so like I said layer shifts look cool however they uh, completely waste your print and uh, we're gonna have to go for round three on this one and by round three I mean round three is no good either because it layer shift this one I caught right when it was layer shifting you could see the uh, spaghetti start to form uh, and then also round four did not work as well you could it just barely started layer shifting in this case but uh, you, I just ripped it off the platform. I've basically have been watching this like a hawk now that 
all these prints have been gone to waste. Okay, so here we have rounds 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Uh, as you can see, this is just sort of a glimpse. Normally it's not this extreme, but for 3D printing, there is a, even if you've had one for a while, there's a learning curve, not even to just 3D printing, but to 3D printing each and every model. So every time you get a new plastic, try a new model, there is a bit of a learning curve involved. And this is uh, an extreme example. I figured out what the issue was, actually. I had a loose uh, Y-axis belt that was became misaligned. Uh, it was, so basically the printer would move slightly back, slightly easier backwards than forwards, and over time that would eventually mess up the orientation of the axes. So you get nine failed attempts. And then this is one that I've been testing preparation on, but here we have our successful print. Uh, unfortunately, I started printing in a lower quality plastic just because I was getting mad that I was wasting all this good plastic that I bought to print this crossbow in. So you could see that uh, what I've been trying to do with some layer preparation, this is what used to be a little worse, and I think I have a video clip of that. However, uh, through a bunch of sanding and layer uh, different coatings, I was able to remove most of the cracking that comes with this low quality plastic. However, uh, there's still a bit left which I want to fill up obviously before I finish up the blaster, but overall it's turning out pretty good so far. Okay, so I finally, 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 after like 10 attempts, got this middle section to work in a print. Uh, turns out that I had a loose belt on the bottom of my printer which would cause the layer shifting as seen in previous sections of this video uh, and all those failed prints. So now we're finally done with that and we're back on track. I ended up printing this in a lower quality ABS plastic as you could tell by the very slight uh, cracking that's going on here. But that shouldn't really be a big deal. I can just fill it in as there's no actual uh, stresses on this piece. It's primarily, you know, just to hold the tube in and uh, just to look pretty and flow with the rest of the last year. So a little bit of touch-up detail and some filling will make this look A-OK. -okay. So as you can see here, I just did a rough fitting with the rods in it, and this will basically be the front half of the blaster. I'm obviously going to paint it so that it all looks uh, not as janky as this, to be honest. But uh, I'm debating about gluing these pieces and then just doing some slight body work to fill in this hair gap that's going to be up here. And then I'll probably do that as well with the handle section. But basically, I'm just going to sand this down. Uh, this is actually ABS, so it'll sand really well. And then on top of that, I have a uh, coating that I'm going to do on top of it, and that'll fill in all these little cracks. And then I'll sand that away, prime it, and paint it, and it'll be good as new. Okay, so now that I have the two front pieces done, uh, minus, you know, the tip, uh, I glued them together, and then I did some initial sanding, and then washed it. So now we have a pretty smooth surface, however, there's still some slight cracking, just from this being a lower quality plastic, like I had mentioned, uh, and I kind of want to get rid of that, and as well as hide the seam up here a bit. So to do that, I've read that this is a good product, it's a surface preparation, but uh, it takes a while to dry and then sand and dry and sand. It takes about 24 hours for the layer to cure and then you sand it again and apply another layer if you so desire and then you repeat the process. So because this is going to take a while, I'm going to get started on this piece just to sort of test it out and see if that cracking goes away, which it should, and then I will get back to you from there, but it's going to take a few layers probably, so I'm going to get started with that. Okay, now for the stock portion, it's actually two separate pieces. Uh, there's going to be six total finishing nails that'll just go through here and then they should go all the way through or I might do you know 12 uh, six on each side uh, I'm debating if I want to glue this together or not uh, might be beneficial then I could do a bit more body work and clean it up a bit but then that also removes the ability to take it apart although I don't really plan on taking it apart so I'll probably just glue it together for stability purposes uh, the back just do the printing orientation of this piece. I printed it like that on my printer. Uh, the finish is pretty bad due to the, how the supporting material worked. So rather than going through and just cleaning this all up by hand, I'm probably going to do a little bit of putty work just to make this a little more of a rounded stock and to get rid of some of these ridges that turned out poorly. So I think that's going to be the option I go with. If I ever print this in the future, I'm going to make a cut 
spread along this ridge line and then print that piece facing upwards so that way I get good finish on both and then just glue them together. Two pieces down, we're down to just the uh, cosmetic top piece now. We're going to go do the handle next. Okay, so now my handle is quite successful. The catch uh, mechanism goes through here. That's where the priming rod will pull through. The catch will go in here. The trigger just kind of slides from the back. There's two little holes where I'm, you have to put uh, nails or little rods through and then those attach to the springs that will act for the trigger and catch springs. This is actually the second one of these I printed. Uh, this one I printed with a different type of support uh, that is normally very solid however for a complex print like this it's a little too solid and I'm not sure if it goes with the infill percentage of the print itself because it's basically rock solid and impossible to remove. So I spent like almost an hour trying to get all this infill out and just drilling at it and pulling it apart and I actually put a slight hairline crack in the uh, piece right here even though this is a very high infill percentage because it's taking the stress of the blaster. So like I said before uh, it's basically rock solid and uh, I didn't want to, you know, break the piece any further. You can see the crack right there. So I just decided to print it again with a weaker type of support and uh, still needed a little time to rip it all off because it was a rather complex print, but uh, we're good to go now. Kind of difficult to fit frame, but uh, this is sort of the whole shell now that it's complete. Uh, I just realized through my first test fitting that the pins I bought were for the original version in the uh, parts list. I don't know if, I didn't read carefully enough to determine whether these were, uh, there were other pins, but these were the ones in the part list, and they only go out to about there, whereas with the nose cone, let me just shift this back slightly, but with the uh, extended nose cone on the front, it doesn't go out far enough, so I might just have to buy 832, just threaded rod from like Home Depot or something and then just put like a lock nut on that end so it won't come off and then I'll put my other nut on this end. But overall this is shaping out to be a fantastic build. So the game plan now is to make the internals for the blaster which will be, I have uh, clear polycarb tubing which will look really cool. I love the, the look of the spring and just seeing the whole action through the eye area. I think that's one of my favorite parts about seeing modified crossbows so I'm glad that I finally get to do that. Uh, I got full length K26 ready to go for this. Uh, all that I really need to do is print the trigger and catch mechanism. Uh, there's the priming rod which will be supported by another one of these rods. So it'll it'll not just be 3D printed plastic, there is an actual metal rod on the inside so that'll help to support that. Like I'm going to print that in a ABS which is a bit of a tougher plastic so that should be good to go. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the catch or trigger mechanism wearing down over time, however it'd be really easy to just print a new one and I'll probably have extras ready to go when I bring this to my first event. Uh, other than that, I have to do body preparations for the rest of the blaster. I'm sort of using this as the guinea pig just because it has the sort of lower quality plastic and I wouldn't mind reprinting that if it doesn't turn out well, but I'm going to do my best to test all my body prep on this and once I have my method down to go, I'm going to coat the rest of the body and sort of get that along as well. I think I'm actually going to piece this uh, build vlog up into several, uh, probably just, you know, this one for externals and another one for finishing the externals and internals and then doing paint and stuff like that because I want to paint this full blaster, go all out with it. So I'm probably going to split up this video. I'm actually debating about just splitting up a lot of my build guides in the future, uh, especially the more complicated ones like this and then obviously the simple ones will all be one video, but uh, just so that I can post a little more modding content, which is what I want my channel to focus around as I don't really like making, you know, review and filler type content. I'd rather just do modding pretty much all the time. Anyway, if you have strong opinions on, you know, splitting up videos into multiple parts, let me know. Uh, either way, in the comment section, I think it'd let me make a little more content, which would be nice. But uh, other than that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This has been a super fun build so far, and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. So check that out in a future video. But other than that, as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.